eye-popping content that was released directly yo 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 what's good world y'all already know who it is man it's your boy man it's your boy geo man i got an update man back with another one your boy diddy is in some heat man they saying that his kids is testifying against him man his kids is talking man they coming out i guess they know that it's day time too they about to go down with him so they said hey i might as well spill the beans i don't know what's going on with his family man but the kids they talking man then also your girl jaguar right she said yeah she hit the parties up man she go to the party she she claims she getting everybody out man she said she be hitting them parties up hard on them you know so i guess she getting the evidence up or something whatever else too since uh things didn't go like she wanted it to go with her in the industry you know with diddy putting out then thirdly that baby oil man they said that that's that's liquid uh cocaine you know so they they gonna test them bottles, man. They gonna be testing everything in his house, man. They might do another raid. Your boy uh did it, his son. He said he missed the other house next door, so I'm pretty sure they hitting that up. Jaguar right talking about them damn dungeons and you know, underground tunnels and stuff that's in this his his spot. They saying uh, a lot of celebrities is uh sk skipping a spot, man. They 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 dipping, they living out. Uh, one allegedly was supposed to be Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio. He's supposed to be in skipping town man because of what's going on the heat that's going on you know um every artist that you can think of or celebrity rather that you can think of is in there including a lot of people that's from higher up stuff too man this, this is gonna go down man um i showed y'all the list i might put it on there again um so y'all can see a lot of the people that's up there so far man um y'all gotta drop in the comments let me know what y'all think about this entire situation man that's going on man with your boy man says living conditions bad you know he he's not eating because he's starving himself because he think he's gonna get poisoned by somebody in there you know 1090 jake said he need a knife in there so he can have protection especially if they put him in the general population with everyone else is that and uh man there's too much stuff going on y'all gotta check out these this video man let me know y'all feedback in the comments man while y'all edit man hit that subscribe button man i appreciate all y'all love and support man y'all already know i do man and let's keep running it up man uh we're gonna be hitting that live soon y'all stay warm stay safe man i'm out you fucking right i go to diddy parties which is where people like me step in To walk motherfuckers out. Because ain't nobody stopping me when I come. Why would they talk about it? Who is there to go to? Who's going to fucking help them? What HR department do you know of that works for any of these labels? Yeah. When have you ever heard of a sexual harassment suit being publicly acknowledged in the entertainment industry at all? Never. Not in entertainment. Tupac. That's Tupac. Remember that one? That was. He was the only one. Yeah, yeah. He saw how that turned out. Yeah, that was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Guilty. That's why they do it. To make you an example. Mm. To remind you what they're willing to do to keep things the way they want them. Mm. It's intimidation. Can't go to the authorities. They're all bought and paid for. You could try to get a special prosecutor, but they'll just pay somebody to reassign him to another case. Be open to a plea bargain. Well, it's not up to me. It's up, it's up to Mr. Combs, and I, I, I don't see it happening. Why? Because he believes he's innocent. He believes he's innocent. And, and, and what's more, he believes that he needs to stand up, um, not just for himself, for his family, and for everybody who's been targeted by the, the federal government. Mr. Combs feels A, he's innocent, which is why he's not gonna plead guilty. B, he's going to be truthful about this case because he wants to portray that to the people who have loved him his whole life. And I think he also feels an obligation to people in general. Maybe it's black people, maybe it's white people, maybe it's anybody who's ever felt aggrieved and targeted by the government. He feels an obligation to those people to say, you know what, maybe I can break the model. You know, maybe I can show the world that a black man can win, you know, in federal court. And I think he probably is the only person I know of who might be able to actually accomplish that.
Uh, it's just crazy. Just read, read. New audio has surfaced as part of a lawsuit that accuses Christian Holmes, Sean Diddy Combs' son, of sexual assault. The fall of Sean Diddy Combs has been nothing short of monumental, and what's coming out now is even more jaw-dropping than anyone could have imagined. It's not just the A-listers or business partners turning their backs on him. It's his own family. Yes, you heard that right. Diddy's own sons have reportedly made a deal with the FBI, spilling details that could seal the fate of their once powerful father. These aren't just vague whispers anymore. As the investigation unfolds, the role Diddy's sons played in his downfall is coming into focus, and the web of connections is more twisted than we ever thought. This has to be a 100% culture shock. I can't imagine living... Diddy's arrest was a seismic event that sent shockwaves through the entertainment world. He's no stranger to scandal, but this time, it's different. His empire isn't just being rocked by rumors, it's being systematically dismantled. The charges against him are nothing short of overwhelming. We're talking racketeering, fraud, and, of course, his infamous wild parties that are now central to the investigation. These were the parties where Diddy allegedly lured people into a life of excess, where powerful celebrities mingled and partied like there was no tomorrow. But beneath all the glitz and glamour, something far darker was brewing. You know, I think in federal court and for these charges, they would say it's routine. But in the public realm, this is very significant, just from who we associate Diddy being and everything we've seen him do over the decades. Like you said, this is quite the downfall to go from, I mean, we saw the mansions back, back in March that were raided by the feds. So to go from living in those mansions to being in a jail cell right now. Now, the focus has shifted to his two sons, who once enjoyed the same opulent lifestyle their father was known for. We always saw them at the parties, on the red carpets, in the front rows of exclusive events. They were living the high life, following in their father's footsteps. But what most people didn't know is that they weren't just bystanders. Allegedly, they were right in the thick of it. The FBI had their eyes on them for a while. And as soon as Diddy was arrested, it didn't take long for his sons to be named as accomplices. Why doesn't the government want him to turn himself in? Because then they can't ask for detention. So they go and they arrest him. They arrest a guy who came to New York to turn himself in. The most damning part. Their involvement in their father's business was much deeper than anyone realized. While Diddy is facing charges for everything from running illegal operations to financial crimes, it's now been revealed that his sons were directly involved in these schemes. They weren't just living off Diddy's fortune. They were helping him build it through shady deals and unethical business practices. When the FBI came down on them, it was clear they had been part of their father's inner circle, aware of how things were really running behind the scenes. This is a huge stain on his reputation, to say the least. And this really feels like a fall from grace for one of the biggest stars and moguls. Sources close to the investigation suggest that Diddy's sons had a hand in funneling money through various channels, creating a maze of offshore accounts and dummy corporations that were part of a much larger, highly organized financial scam. On paper, they looked like legitimate businessmen, but the reality was far from it. Their involvement in money laundering operations tied directly back to Diddy's crimes. The whole setup was designed to hide the true origins of their father's vast fortune. And here's where it gets really interesting. The authorities caught on to it. If he's allowed to go through with any of the sales, I won't be able to recoup any of my monies or anything from him as a result of any possible judgment in this action, if he's allowed to proceed with it. And a, an injunction or a restraining order would help ensure that he's not manipulating and selling the property to avoid. Once the Fed started digging, it was clear that Diddy's sons weren't going to escape unscathed. Faced with the evidence, they were left with two options, go down with their father or save themselves. It's being reported that both sons quickly realized their situation and cut a deal with investigators. And let's be real with the possibility of spending decades in jail looming over them. You can't exactly blame them for wanting to avoid that fate. But this is where the story takes a heartbreaking turn. Diddy never saw it coming. He never expected that his own sons would be the ones to bring him down. And Stacey, you say today's indictment reads like a mob indictment. What was most shocking to you of all these allegations? Yeah, the fact, Jake, that the government in, in this indictment presented evidence alleging that Sean Cones was running a criminal enterprise. Imagine the scene. Diddy sitting in a cold, dimly lit interrogation room, learning that his sons have flipped on him. For a man who prided himself on being untouchable, who spent decades cultivating an image of strength and control, this betrayal must have been crushing. The mogul who once commanded an empire of music, fashion, and media was- We'll take this into consideration too, because I think what they said was he's facing 15 mandatory to life if he blows trial. Um, he technically has a sex case. He can't walk in a federal prison. They're not gonna go for that. You know what I mean? So it's like, 
You blow trial and you get hit with a life sentence of 30 years or whatever, where is he gonna go that he's actually safe in a federal prison? Because if he hits a USP with sex charges, it's over with. You're gonna have that 20-year-old kid that just got in there, he's got a fresh life sentence, killed somebody with a switch, he's got mad time. He knows if he goes and stabs Diddy, his name just went up in the ranks. You got dudes that have been in there for mad long that would love to have that reputation, the Whitey Bulger case. They didn't have shit to do with each other and they still killed them. You know what I'm saying? So you never know, it could always be a situation, but it's just gonna be the fact that could you imagine Diddy picking up a knife? No. So if he hits a spot where they're stabbing shit, he's at a disadvantage. Without Puff around, who knows what people will try to do to get at whatever little is left of his empire after he's convicted, if he's convicted. I don't think he wants to leave his children in this world defenseless like that with the kind of enemies he got black and white. I don't think he want to do that. Now, I can see the power structure falsely claiming that he's on suicide watch if, God forbid, they try to take him out of here. I'm concerned for the brother's safety more than I am worried about a potential suicide. And, the, and, I, and let me tell you the mistake Puff made that Jay-Z did not make. And I am not accusing Jay-Z of anything. I want to be clear. But let's say hypothetically, if Sean Carter had any skeletons in his closet, one of the most effective things he did to clean up them skeletons and seal off those skeletons are he got married and created a family. One thing you see Caucasian men do, Art, they might be cross dressers. They might be homosexuals. They might be pedophiles. They might be murderers. What do all white males in the public eye do to make sure they're protecting their image legally and publicly? They get a wife and they have children. They build family. Look at them. Every last one of them build a wife. They might marry a They might marry a they might marry a prostitute, but they are going to have a wife and they are going to have children because it protects their public image from the types of accusations that Sean Combs has. You cannot underestimate the power of perception when it comes to you being accused of sexual crimes, whether you innocent or guilty. That is the one thing Sean Combs should have learned. It's a lesson he should have learned and he learned it too late. Get married, build family. And I'm not saying Sean Carter only married Beyonce for that. I'm not saying, I believe he loved his sister. T.I. and Tiny been together since the beginning. So we know that wasn't a Hollywood marriage. That's real black love right there. I'm simply saying, if you're going to be out here doing the things that Puffy does, get your ass a wife and build a family. He had the children, Art, but he didn't have the wife. When I was talking with my little Capitol Records executive on the plane for three hours, matter of fact, we're still talking right now in the DM. He said that he personally knew that Diddy was going to go to jail 10 years ago when he was at a party. But the Capitol Records executive that I was talking to on my way back from LA to Miami, and he said because he's seen the rooms and he's seen the people that was there and he knows firsthand that Khaled and, and Rick Ross and all those guys are gay men. He's been in the back. And he said, I swear for God on everything. The feds won't catch me on now tape. He may catch me in the room watching but bitch, I ain't on tape fucking nobody. He said I was married with three children. This is the music industry. You get invited to these parties. But he said he's seen them. He's seen them. He said a lot of these rappers y'all be fucking, oh, they so fine. And I see them with some of the most beautiful women, especially black women, because he said he attracted the black women. He was just like, they gay. They gay gay. I would buy him wine. I was like, yo, hey, 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 bring it out here. Was, he was like, yeah, man, they gay. I remember I did it. And he was like, we were on a boat. It was his boat. And he said that Diddy happened to be invited on the boat. And he said, Diddy, the reason Diddy 
is going through the things that he's going through is because he's a severe alcoholic and drug addict. He said he's the nicest person ever when he's sober. But when he drinks and he does pink cocaine, he turns into a demon. He gets aggressive. So he either has to fight or fuck. And they always had to have security around to calm Diddy down. So if he couldn't beat nobody ass, he was fucking somebody in the ass. We're going to get to it. What did Puff do to piss you the fuck off? How did he do you dirty if he did you dirty? And what is and what is doing dirty if a motherfucker puts you on? Mm, that's really good. Let me take my shades off for that. Um, now, I could say this because it's not something I didn't say to him. Puff, how, how do I want to say this? Me and Puff was like... I felt like I did more than I got credit for, more than I got paid for. You felt or did you do that? Um, Because you said felt. like Okay, feeling, let's clear that up then. You saying you feeling that. No, we're going to keep it. Because I'm, I'm trying to be nice. I never got paid what I was worth, and I never got the respect I was worth. So the disdain that I got for Puff is more like, you trying to keep me here, nigga. I'm not here. All my peers is up here. All my peers are bosses. When it's time, just like somebody raised somebody up, you know they did work with you. They go from your little man to maybe A&R to something else. He just kept trying to keep me right here like, like he didn't want me to grow at anything. And And... To anybody, is that going to bother you? Yeah. Especially if I'm producing the work. Yeah. Puff would go out and party, and I would be in the studio writing the records, and then I'd just come back and say, he'll say this is his part or that is his part, but I was the person there creating it all. Right. And then, I mean, from the lyrical standpoint, where somebody did a beats, and even more money, more problems, I came up with that. I came up with the beat, too. And I said, Stevie, we need to do this beat and do it like this. So just imagine all of these moments that are taken from you, the 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 records, the beats, you ain't getting the money, you publishing. ain't getting the publishing, you ain't getting the respect. And I don't think you're like that. No. I so wouldn't. that became really frustrating for me because I'm you say looking. You don't think you like that. What that mean? I don't think you would like that. Like, like if okay. a motherfucker did you like that, <laughs> yeah, what the fucking like, story is you listening to, nigga? And I don't think you like that to be pulling what you pulling. Yeah, you, uh, and you mm. from the ghetto, you like I'm yeah, sure. like you know what you know what would come with doing that. But everybody is letting you get away with it. Everybody. So me quitting after one album, it didn't take long for me to figure it out. Like I'm not gonna be here with this. I don't care who's here because. You're not paying me, and you're not respecting me, and that's the real problem. Did you? Did you? Did, did, did all right? And that's just that's just that's just the beginning. All right, then it's then it's people that try to do bodily harm with me. They will be in the house with Puff, so I'm like, it's a funny game y'all playing behind the scenes. So when people see me, they just see me turned up. They just see me agitated. They just see me aggressive, but they don't know why. So if somebody, let's just say we run down on Gilly car, we if we got guns or whatever where we got them, and we trap Gilly, and then the next week you see wallow with me at your house, how are you going to feel? Yeah, I'm snapping out. You tweaking, right? Right. So now my head is bugging like what's really going on because every time something happened to me, it's somebody that's with him. But this is supposed to be the nigga I'm signed to. This is supposed to be who I'm getting money with. And I got to say this because when people see me irate and they see me aggressive, they want to, oh, what is Mace doing? Mace is bugging. No, it's a point you get to that you like, yo, I, I can't I can't let you play because you playing now dangerous game so imagine somebody doing that and then they over there talking about brother love oh. imagine how you feeling bro mm. 
So it's like you holding a you you you. I I can't blame Puff for this because I can't say he's doing it, but I can't say he's not. So if you look at the people who hate on me, right? They're from Revolt shows. Who run Revolt? Mm. The people that had the biggest problems with Mace and write the craziest stuff about Mace come from Revolt. Who run Revolt? I'm still asking y'all because everything people keep doing, I'm like, why do they keep tripping on me? It's almost like they want me to be something that's going to be detrimental to them because it's not going to be detrimental to me. Damn. So answer that though, no, since but, we really uh, no, talk. Puff run revolt. Did he run revolt? Did yeah, he run, he run revolt. revolt. Right. So when I when I hit him up and I say, "Yo, you got people every time they trying to discredit my name, you don't think that blocked me from other deals? You don't think that blocked me from other monies? You don't think that does something to my livelihood?" Is you being blackballed right now? Not not now because I've I've reached a place where. I'm just going to say it. I get so much money outside of music that they couldn't blackball me because I don't rely on a system. You you even heard from Tubby. What I have is called a joint venture. So my money don't come from Favi. I get paid when Columbia get paid. So everything I'm doing, and that's a deal that we can name on Two hands, the people in business and in, in music business that's black that got that deal is probably what baby got is, you know, Hove got something special, you know, but we can name on the hands people who get. And I'm not saying I get Hove kind of money at no, no extent, but I'm saying the type of deal I have, yeah, my money Hove, comes straight Hove to don't me. wear Rolex diamonds. He wear yeah, plain yeah, jeans. Yeah, he wear plain Big jeans. Oh, you taking shots at him? No, that's my man. <laughs> <laughs> I still... Would you be open to a plea bargain? Well, it's not up to me. It's up It's up to Mr. Combs, and I, I, I don't see it happening. Why? Because he believes he's innocent. He believes he's innocent. And, and, and what's more, he believes that he needs to stand up um, not just for himself, for his family, and for everybody who's been targeted by the, the federal government. Mr. Combs feels, A, he's innocent, which is why he's not going to plead guilty. B, he's going to be truthful about this case because he wants to portray that to the people who have loved him his whole life. And I think he also feels an obligation to people in general. Maybe it's black people, maybe it's white people, maybe it's anybody who's ever felt aggrieved and targeted by the government. He feels an obligation to those people to say, you know what, maybe I can break the model. You know, maybe I can show the world that a black man can win, you know, in federal court. And I think he probably is the only person I know of who might be able to actually accomplish that. Puffy, the video footage shows you stomping on Cassie and then throwing a vase at her forehead. It was a dark time for me. And before that, you punched her in her woman face with your man fist. Is that on camera too? No, it's just in the police report. Yeah, that didn't happen. I'm tired of people trying to assassinate my character. I'm a good person. I'm going to rehab and everything for this. I didn't know you could be addicted to beating up your girlfriend. Yeah, lots of us celebrities are. Me, Floyd Mayweather, Mel Gibson, Charlie Sheen, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Not the Texas rattlesnake. Let's take a commercial break. When we come back, we're going to bring on some of Puffy's gay lovers. Do I come out now? So Diddy and Deshaun, y'all think it's cool to assault women, huh? And men. I'm gonna scare you two straight. And here, you two are gonna be the ones getting assaulted. Oh no! Really? Oh yeah, I'm talking every day. Easter, Mother's Day, Columbus Day, Passover, Christmas, Jesus' birthday. That's the same day. That's cause you're getting it twice on Christmas. Oh God! We got a squirter. I like that. All right, I think they learned their lesson. Let's go! Nah, I'm staying. If I'd have known prison was this awesome, I would've gone forever ago instead of having Shine do my time. You know what I'm saying? You see what it's like. Yo, what up? Neo. Fab. Finally got you here, man. Yeah, what up? What up? What up, Diddy? What up? Come on in. Come on in. Make yourself at home, man. Come here. Come here, Fab. Have a seat. Right here next to me, Fab. Y'all told me beautiful women was going to be. There you go. Y'all need something to drink? Hold up. Hey, serve it. Serve it. Get over here, man. Yes, master. You want me to pour y'all a bottle of Barack? Get everybody a cup of that Barack. Yo, what the fuck? What's Barack? Oh, that's a rock. You know, he blood. He can't say the C's, you know what I mean? 
man, damn, you looking good over there, fam. Mm, damn. Mm, I like that outfit. I like that. I like how your shoes match your match your top, my nigga. Damn. Mm, here you go. There you are. Mm, hey, go. nigga. What you doing? Nigga, that's the good stuff, nigga. I ever give you the good stuff for them two years you was running with me? Nah, I ain't never get none of it. Put that shit back. Pour it back in the bottle. Get out of here. I'm gonna go use the bathroom right quick. Bathroom right around the corner, man. Go ahead. Hurry back. What the fuck? This nigga ain't just like the party. This nigga like freak ass party. This nigga I don't want to be. Yo, Fab, what's going on in there? You good in there? Why you taking so long, Fab? What's going on? Beyond a minute. Hold up. You ain't doing no number two. Hey, yo, you ain't getting it dirty back there, is you? Yo, the baby wipes is on the counter. Make sure you clean up. Get it real clean. Yeah, give me a quick second. Yo, open the door, man. Let me see what you're doing in there. Open the door. Shit, this door. I don't like locked doors around here. I like to see niggas using the bathroom, this bitch. Open the door. Damn. I like to see him run. 